Hey, my name is Kara. I'm an ultrasound tech, and let's talk today about what I would say during an internal scan for a patient who has never had this done before. And this video is more geared towards new grads or those of you who are in ultrasound school. I haven't done one of these videos in a while, so I figure why not? Before we get started, I did want to mention the new group that I made for expectant as well as current moms, and that link can be found in my bio. I think we have a really great supportive community over there and also it's easier for me to talk to you guys over there versus on TikTok where there is a character limit. So if you have any questions, please go ahead, go click on my profile link and then that will bring you over to my group. And if you have anything that you want to ask, it's easier just for us to talk over there. Anywho, let's go ahead and get into the video. So for those of you that don't know, an internal scan is actually a pretty common thing that we do in ultrasound. So obviously this is going to be for our female patients and it is done with almost every single pelvic exam that we do just because it gives a much better look at the organs internally when we are trying to look at the pelvis. There are a few instances where we don't do internal scans, including if you are not sexually active, but for the most part, we do do them on every single patient. And unfortunately, sometimes doctors don't explain to their patients beforehand that that is going to happen during the scan. So some are caught off guard, which never great. But at the same time, I've been told by the majority of our patients that it is pretty painless as well as it is way better than what they anticipated when they first heard that they were going to get an internal ultrasound. I've also had them myself and I can say for, again, the majority of patients, if you have had a pap test done before or if you've had kids before, it's a walk in the park. But anyways, back to the internal spiel. So since this is the camera that we are using during the scan, which again, if you are in ultrasound school or you are a new grad, you already know what these cameras look like. But I always do explain to the patient that although this part of it is super long, most of it is handle. That I think usually puts the patient at ease because then they're not thinking, okay, they're going to go ahead and insert this whole darn thing in there, which this thing is like, you know, probably that long altogether with like this much being the handle. So it's definitely just important to explain to your patient that only about a few inches goes in and the thickness of it is about as much as a tampon. This gives a reference point for the patient so that they know what to expect, as well as it obviously takes away the fear if they catch a look at this camera before we are doing the test and they're like, what is that? Is that all going to go inside of me? You can definitely reassure them that no, it is not all going to go inside but most of it is handled because obviously we need something to grab onto and we don't want to be all up in there more than what we have to be. I also think it's important to mention that we use probe covers on the camera or condoms at certain clinics just so that the patient knows that there is some sort of barrier between them and just the actual camera that is sterile. And at the clinic that I work at, we used to have condoms if you didn't have a latex allergy and then we use the sterile probe covers if you did. But now we just have probe covers. It's super easy. And that is what we use on every patient. So a probe cover is going to go on, obviously, the camera here. And then I also make sure that in the patient's line of sight, they can see me actually removing the probe cover so that, again, they know that they are having a nice, sterile new cover for their internal exam. There's also jelly that we put on the end of the probe. So I also like to warn the patient that it is a sterile gel. So therefore, we don't warm it up beforehand. That is to inhibit the growth of bacteria. I also tell them that just because with the stuff that we use in a regular ultrasound exam, that stuff is warmed up. So I always go ahead and tell them that unfortunately, the internal gel, because it is sterile, we can't warm it up. And it's not actually super cold. It's room temperature. But because our bodies are not at room temperature, it feels much colder than room temp. You should also tell your patient about how long the exam is going to last. For an average internal exam, depending on what pathology you see, as well as just how experienced of a scanner you are, etc., should last between 5 to 15 minutes. But I tell my patients between 5 and 10 minutes is what I am going to take for the exam. Just so again, that they mentally know that, okay, I'm going to be laying here for about 5-10 minutes and this is the duration of the exam. And they don't think, okay, well, it's just going to be really quick and then it's really not. Or they don't think I'm really laying here forever when in fact that is not the case. Also, I think it is really important for the patient to insert the camera themselves and also for you to obtain consent from the patient to do the exam. The consent thing should seem really, really obvious to whoever is performing the exam, but consent is always key. 
And I always ask the patient before we start the exam, basically at the beginning when I am asking all the history, and I always obtain consent from the patient even before the regular transabdominal portion of the exam starts just so that I can get a verbal okay that this is all right to do at the very end of the test. And the whole getting the patient to insert the camera themselves is just because for myself, I find it just easier for them to insert the camera because they obviously know their own anatomy better than what I do. And if it is super painful or they want the exam to stop before it has even obviously began during the insertion part, then they can let me know. And they can also go at their own pace when they are inserting the camera because, let's be honest, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but it shouldn't be painful. Also at the clinic that I'm at, we do use these blue cushions for underneath the patient's bum just to keep the pelvis elevated because we do do a lot of angling during these internal tests. So we don't have this weird small part. I don't know what that is used for. But anyways, we have this blue cushion over here. And when I am telling the patient how to get changed, I do let them know that their bum should be basically in that cutout part right there, not on the bed, like where their feet should be over here, but actually on the cushion with their bum in that little cutout, and then they'll be laying back. But I do always like to reiterate that your bum shouldn't be on the bed over here. It should actually be in the cushion because it is confusing when you are doing this for the first time. And when you are getting up on this weird wedge shape thing, which again, I've had internals done before and it is really uncomfortable to actually try and get up there, especially when you don't have anything on from the waist down. But anywho, I always make sure to explain that well to the patient. And also we usually have a blue pad just laid over top of this. So your bum isn't on top of this really cold plastic. And then we also have just a large sheet that they can go ahead and cover up with. All right, so with all that being said, I'll go over what I say during the internal test as well as like before and after it, just so that if you haven't gotten your spiel down pat yet, hopefully you can get some ideas. So when the patient comes back from emptying out their bladder, I'll get them to come back into the room and then I will tell them, all right, so now I'm going to get you changed for the internal portion of the exam. You are going to go ahead and take everything from the waist down off. So that means your pants as well as your underwear. And then I'm going to get you to lay back down on the bed here. Now, if you notice, I do have a blue cushion on the bed here, and this is going to elevate your pelvis. So your bum should be where this cutout is on the cushion here. And again, I'm like motioning with my hand and showing them on the bed what I mean. So your bum should be where the cutout is here, not here on the bed, actually here in the cushion. And then you are going to be laying back on that slopey part of the cushion. And then there is this big sheet here to cover up. I'll go ahead and just give you a few minutes to do that, and then I will pop back in, and then we can go ahead and get started. Oh, and I forgot to mention that while they're in the bathroom, I do go ahead and set up my camera and get everything set up just to make it easier when I come back into the room after they get changed, we can get right into the exam, and they're not just laying there for a prolonged amount of time while I'm getting everything set up. Anyways, so I come back in the room, make sure they're ready, and then I go ahead and raise the bed up because I do my internal scans standing up. So I say, all right, I'm going to go ahead and just raise the bed up here just because I'm going to be standing for this part of the exam. And I'm also just going to take a quick peek underneath the sheet here just to make sure that your bum is down far enough on the cushion. I then just go ahead and look and make sure that it's far down enough. And if it is, great. And then I go ahead and grab the camera and I say to them, all right, so this is the camera that I'm going to be using today. I know it looks super intimidating, but don't worry. It only goes in about a few inches and it is only about the thickness of a tampon. And if you have any sort of pain during the test, please let me know. It will be a bit uncomfortable just because of the nature of the exam, but it shouldn't be painful. I'm also going to put some gel on the end of the camera here. This stuff is cold, sorry. And I'm actually going to get you to reach underneath the sheet here. And I'm going to pass you the camera underneath the sheet. And you are going to go ahead and insert it for me. I also tell them that it'll last between 5 and 10 minutes. And if at any point they want me to stop, please let me know and I check in with them a few times during the test. 